Hello, and welcome. I am Scarperlock, and this is City of Heroes. We're with Liberty Lass, who needs about a million one hundred thousand to get to the next level. We have 25 million influence, and we're on a story arc. Now, the Psychic Plane and Vanessa DeVore. We need to go to the warehouse on Peregrine Island and check to make sure that we have defeated her, but, of course, we know... Whoops, we don't need to go this way. We know that we haven't, because uh, we're going to have to fight her again. <coughs> So what happens is you go in there, you find out the Carnies are still there, and her memory is still messed up or whatever, and then you fight her for real uh, in the next, one of the next missions. So off we go to Peregrine Island. I hope you guys are doing alright. I will apologize if I screw things up a little bit. Um, I went to the eye doctor today, and they dilated my pupils about five hours ago and so they're mostly back to normal but not entirely and things are a little bit blurry um i remember most of my life when i got my pupils dilated i couldn't read anything for a really long time now that my eyes are much worse and i have progressive lenses in my glasses um i never used to need glasses until four or five years ago but now that I have progressive glasses, you know, prescription glasses with progressive lenses, I can actually see mostly okay, even while I'm dilated. Which was not true before I got the glasses, so it's weird that the glasses are fixing the dilation. I, you know, a little bit at least. I can see well enough to play. And I can actually read the words on the screen and stuff, which even after four or five hours probably wouldn't have been true years ago when I wasn't wearing glasses. <clears throat> and I could even read sort of right after that, like when they handed me the prescription drop for the drops I need and stuff, um, and when I went to Walgreens to get the prescription, I could read everything even, you know, just an hour or two after getting dilated, which never used to happen. Anyway, if I screw up and don't notice stuff, it's that my eyesight's a little bit impaired right now because of the... Uh, dilating drops. All right. You know, I heard the craziest thing today. I was, I, I'm, I've gotten, as I've mentioned before, interested in doing some writing and uh, I'm actually doing what you're not supposed to do in a way, right? Instead of actually writing, I'm watching videos about writing, but part of the reason I'm doing that is I don't want to get started on doing some writing, and I'm going on a trip day after tomorrow. I was actually supposed to go yesterday, leave yesterday, but I was having some eye issues, which is why I went to the eye doctor today. Uh, it turns out I have a little bit of inflammation, so I've got to take some drops for it, and then i got to go back in a month. Uh, so my trip is going off uh, two days from now instead of yesterday. Anyway... Knowing that I had this trip coming up, I really did not want to start writing something because I won't really be able to write in a realistic way from my sister's house. You know, I'm spending time with the nephews, spending time with my sister. It's, it's, it's quite distracting there. Oftentimes of an evening, we, you know, rent or download a movie or whatever, and so I sit there with them doing that. I'm not going to, like, leave them and go, like, hide up in my room and write. And by the time I... They're, they, you know, the movie or whatever is done and I'm in the bedroom, it's late enough that I'm tired and, you know, want to go to sleep. So I know I'm not going to get uh, a lot of writing done over the next, like, couple weeks. And I really don't want to get started, get into the flow of it, get some really cool you know, scene work done, and then have to stop in the middle of a scene or something because I've... Uh, you know, I've got to leave, and then I don't get around to it, finishing it until two weeks from now. And I'm not going to remember what I wanted to do anyway. It's like, you know, I don't want to break the flow. So I'm going to wait until I come back and then do some writing. So anyway, I was watching, I'm, you know, I've got nothing better to do writing-wise than to read or watch writing advice. And so I was watching a short, like, six-minute video, and it was about how writers often learn the long wrong things from movies 
And if you know a movie and a novel aren't the same thing, and you shouldn't necessarily try to copy movie making techniques when you're writing a, a book, which seems obvious to me. But what was really weird. And what I found incomprehensible that anyone would think this way, but apparently a bunch of people do, is the guy who made the video said that he knows a number of people who want to be writers, and maybe they are writers doing writing, you know, and they don't think they need to read books. They think that they can get what they need from watching movies and just replicating that and I thought wow that is bizarre to me I can't imagine that but I you know I thought about my students you know I don't teach fiction but I teach them how to write science and I remember saying to them you, you know like asking them you know, show of hands who likes to read and you know class of 16 students maybe two hands would go up and I remember saying to them you, you know in order to learn how to write well you need to read a lot and I pointed out that you know I've read close to 2,000, maybe more, scientific primary papers, research peer-reviewed research papers. And that's nothing. Like, I've known people who've read 10 or 20,000. Uh, I haven't really read a lot of primary papers in the last few years because I just haven't been doing that much research. I was busy with teaching and doing other stuff. And um, I really should read more, but I know, you know, I've read a lot of them so I know how to write them because I've read them and you get a sense of how this thing is written by reading it so I it would never occur to me to try to write a novel without doing a lot of novel reading right reading novels and in fact I tried I, you know I decided I was gonna try writing some short stories which I still feel like that's just not the comfortable form for me one of the reasons it's not is that I historically haven't really enjoyed the short story as a reading thing a, re a form to read and so I tended to read novels and generally long novels right three four five hundred pages I like a good long story if it's you know if it's good I'm gonna to want to sink my teeth into it. I'm gonna want it to last I don't want it to be over in three days you know I want to read it for a couple of weeks or whatever if it's good and live in the headspace for a while but um but when I did start thinking, so I, I never was interested in short stories. And then I started reading Lovecraft, who pretty much only wrote short stories. And I kind of fell in love with the form because of the way he uh, handled that form. And then I started reading a few other collections of short stories and stuff. And so, but then when I said, I think I want to do some short story writing... I started reading a lot more short stories. All the Conans, the Culls, the um, uh, Solomon Canes of Robert Howard. I you know some of the Lankmar ones are short stories. I read some of that. I read uh, a couple of collections of Lovecraftian horror short stories. Although one of the ones I tried to read, I didn't actually like very much. And so, one of the things I realized is if I want to write in this form, I need to read a lot in that form because that will give me a sense of how it's done, right? You get this intuitive sense that um, of kind of how the stories are structured, how quick the pacing is and all of that, whatever the form is that you're doing. And so, yeah, just it was really strange for me to hear that um, that there are people out there who want to write novels and think that they don't need to read a novel in order to write a novel. They they don't need to read multiple novels. They just need to watch movies and then copy what the movies do. And it's interesting as he was describing um, some of the things movies do that don't work that well on the written page. And I was thinking about how uh, in the comic books, they really try, have tried to make them more, quote-unquote, everybody likes words, fancy words like this. They, half the time, I don't know if they know what these words mean, but they, they try to make comic books more, quote-unquote, cinematic, right? More like movies. And that leads to a lot more um, action scenes with no dialogue. They don't write narratives anymore because there aren't any narrations in movies, generally. 
so they don't do d d narrative boxes the way they used to, where they would have the caption narrating what was going on, you know. And um, so they've changed the style to make it more like a movie, but as this writer was saying, uh, the problem with that is that the written word is not a movie, and you can't always do the same things. And he was talking about how, you know, movies oftentimes are basically monopaced. That is to say, they are paced, P-A-C-E-D, not the word paste like glue, but the pacing of a movie is pretty much one-to-one. -one. It's sort of like this, this game, right? The pacing is the same in every scene, roughly. It's happening in real time. Occasionally, they'll throw a slow-mo in. Occasionally, they'll throw a montage in. But for the most part, whatever's happening on the screen is happening in real time, right? It takes as long for the fight to happen as it, they, it takes them to show on screen. It takes as long for the, the conversation to happen as it takes to happen on screen, right? Whereas in a, in a novel, you can gloss over some things and really zoom in on other things. You can take 10 pages to describe a single moment of time, and you can gloss over a year in two sentences. And that allows you to vary the pacing. And you can do the same thing in comic books, but you can't really do the same thing in movies. What did I miss? without it seeming very gimmicky, you know, again, slow motion and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah, I just, I thought about that and I thought, you know, I wonder if, you know, the comics by trying to be cinematic, I actually don't wonder. I think that the comics by trying to be cinematic have lost something that was, uh, that was unique to the medium that they could, because they were a combo of both the visual storytelling and the writing. And they become so much more visual and so much less verbal um, that, yeah, they don't feel the way they used to. And, um, yeah, I, I think that it's the same thing with games, right? When you get these video games where there are all these, like, really complicated cutscenes and voice acting and everything else, what are they doing? I remember even saying to myself when I was playing Mass Effect, which I do enjoy as a game, I feel like I'm playing a movie. But the reality is, and I played Mass Effect a bunch of times, there really aren't that many different... Like, it's all the same story. So, and you can't actually lose fights, right? If you lose a fight and you die, if you just reload from the last save point, and you keep playing that scene until it cut... Cut and rerunning the scene until you get it the way the director wanted it. Okay, that's a wrap, right? You move on to the next scene. They don't have, you know, uh, they don't change the pacing of the time that much, right? Again, it's all sort of mono, uh, you know, single single speed pacing, and it's it's a lot like a movie, but in in many ways it makes it less of a game. If that, if you understand what what I'm saying. Uh, take the mental monocle back to the streets. 20 carnival. Oh man. Do we have, have it, has it been enough time? Yes, we will complete the mission. We're not doing that. We don't do those. And now we need to defeat Vanessa and her servants. And we are going to Brickstown. Come on, select. Okay. This isn't to say that I don't like the quote-unquote cinematic games. Like again, as I said, I really loved Mass Effect, but I think one of the things I loved about Mass Effect was is set the first time I played through it, especially I was essentially watching a, a really cool science fiction movie that I was sort of an interactive science fiction movie, right? It's, it's really more like an interactive movie than a video game. And that doesn't make it a bit bad. As I said, it's one of my favorite video games I've ever played. But I do think that it changes the medium a certain in a certain way. Uh, and, you know, you don't really have that in City of Heroes. 
They tried to add cutscenes, and they've got a few, but not that many, thankfully. Right? And every time a cutscene comes in, I'm like, ugh. Right? I don't... Like, these cutscenes aren't that great, and why? Because they didn't design the game to do cutscenes, because when they made City of Heroes in 2004, people hadn't really done these like dialogue-heavy cutscenes in video games, and especially not in MMOs yet. Those kinds of things started coming out with the Bioware games and some of these other games where um, they were making it like you were in a Star Wars movie or something. And um, they really hadn't done that when COH was being developed. And so the games... Uh, why are we fighting White Cons? The game's uh, engine was not created to support it because they designed City of Heroes to be a video game, not an interactive movie. Now this is Vanessa and her servants. This may be a tough one if she's plus two. This is again going to be another psionic character, but we have faced her before, I think at plus two. Doing okay so far. And I don't know what happened. I was... I came back from my doctor's appointment and I was downstairs doing something. Uh, something minor, right? Like I went downstairs, got myself something to drink and uh, I had taken out the dinner I wanted to have from the freezer, it's leftovers, and defrosted it, and it was... I was supposed to defrost it at lunchtime, and I forgot. So I came home after getting my prescription and everything, it was like already 6 o'clock, and I normally try to have dinner around that time. I'm like, well, it's going to have to wait. So I pulled the stuff out of the freezer and just left it on the counter to defrost, and um, came upstairs. Air conditioner turned on. It makes more noise than... It's a new one. It makes a little more noise than my old one, but not objectionably so. And all of a sudden, I heard this really loud, it sounded like something large fell downstairs. Or upstairs. It wasn't, it didn't feel like it was, it sounded like it was on my floor, but I thought it was downstairs. I thought I heard it coming up the stairwell. I went downstairs, looked all around. I have no idea what the noise was. I didn't see anything. I looked in my garage. I said, did something fall, like, off the shelf onto my car or something? Nothing in there. Um... And I haven't heard it since, so I don't know exactly what happened. And I noticed, I noticed my AC just kicked in. Uh, and as I said, it's a little louder than my old one. And I said, was it that noise? But no, it wasn't that noise. So, I don't know. It's always weird. It always bothers me when I hear a noise in the house, and I can't localize it. And I don't know. There she is. I don't know, you know where it came from. All right, now, I don't know if we're going to get this attendant and not get her or what. So, uh, I think we're going to go Strength of Will. We'll hit Hasten, but we won't hit the Lux until we see if we attract her. Oh, we attracted her. Okay, so we'll hit the Lux. We got her, and now we will attack Vanessa. We're not going to worry about her Dark Servant, because it should disappear when she goes. And we got our Focus Accuracy running, so uh, we should really pop some of these. Do a little more damage to her. We're definitely doing better against her than we did against the Madam of Mayhem, or Mystery, or whatever her name is. Now that thing is healing itself from hitting me, but I don't really care because once she's gone, she's gone. Got her. And that is the mission, and we got the reward merch 82! 
So again, remember, this has something to do with how long, on average, it took people to do the story arc in minutes. Uh, how much, how good the data was from, I think this values range from 0.5 or 6 to 1. I guess if they got good data, so it's a 1. And then something to do with level and some other things. And then the fact that it's a story arc and not like a task force or a trial. So out we go. And that is going to get us pretty close, isn't it? Or is it going to get us all the way? Guys, is that going to get us all the way? We have 611 reward merits, guys. We are going to put in our next set. Excellent. Let us call Harvey Mailer. And we are now one bead from level 48. Is that not excellent? Less than half a bead. Should we try doing a mission and leveling up? What do we actually need here? Just 175,000 XP. I think we can get that, guys. Let's level up. Let's, let's go ahead and actually do the set so that uh, we can try it. So let's look at the next set. This is uh, Enhancements, Archetype Origin Enhancements, Brutes. We already have Brutes Fury, so we're looking at Unrelenting Fury. If we have the full set, um, we get a Recharge or Chance for Regen and plus Endurance. Uh, recharge Rate and then a Chance for Regen and uh, an endurance discount. So there's that. And then if we go to the bottom, the set bonuses, we get plus 2% damage, plus 10% to regeneration, plus 3% to recovery. So regen is health, recovery is stamina. Melee defense goes up. Lethal and smashing defense goes up. It's not a big deal. We only get to about 8%, but something. Uh, negative and energy resistance go up. That is really nice. That'll get us up to 12 on that. Um... So that's that's better. Didn't we used to have 15? Oh, no, we had 15 defense. Um, lethal and smashing resistance go up even more. And mez resistance goes up. And fire and coal resistance go up. So I think one of the things that's a struggle with this set is, except for psionic and smashing and lethal, it doesn't really do anything well, right? It's got some fire defense but not great. It's got some energy resistance, but not great, right? Instead of putting it all into defense, say, and getting 25 or 30%, it's got 15% of this and 10% of that. And that makes it really hard to stack stuff, right? Because if you try to, st like, you have to get sets that only stack the one thing, that makes it actually a little challenging because, like, in martial arts, all you got to do, all you need is melee defense, range defense, and... AOE defense, and you're stacking it on what you already have. There's three things. But this thing, there's like eight things to try and get to stack, and it makes it a little difficult. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and... These all cost 100, so we'll get... Put the enhancements up so I can see it. We're going to get accuracy damage. We're going to get damage recharge. Accuracy damage recharge. I'm always afraid I'm going to buy the wrong thing. Damage Endurance Recharge. Accuracy Damage Endurance Recharge. And... That one. So now... Let's replace that there. Uh, let me go and... S let's go to the base. I'm going to sell all this other crap so it's not in my way. And we have nurses that we can sell to, so that's good. So we go to the med lab. And our little nurse ATM, and we just go boom, 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 and boom. All right, so let's take a look. We have about 15% of the non-traditional defenses, right? Fire and energy. And 8% of the resistance is there. And then 6% smashing and 42% smashing defense and resistance, uh, respectively. So where do we want to put this thing? Um, the extra one is just a chance for regen. So we want this on something that go, we use fairly frequently because each time you use it, there's a chance for that. 
Um, so do we want it on barrage or do we want it on energy punch? Uh, barrage does a base damage of 155, no, 79. And energy punch only does 47. And this is actually, the damage per cycle is 21. This is 16. Damage per activation time is 116. This is 113. And damage per hit is 155 to 94. I mean, this is clearly better. Um, uses a little bit more endurance. Takes a little bit more time to recharge. I think we're going to put this on barrage. So we're going to remove these enhancements. And we're going to put these guys up. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Looking good, guys. And it's back to doing 155 damage. Um, it does a little bit more. It does quite a bit more per cast cycle uh, because we got the recharge time down to three seconds. It was, it was actually six before, wasn't it? Endurance is about the same, maybe slightly less. And we're doing a little bit lower accuracy than we had. I think that we have 1.7, but 1.64 is still pretty good. And now if we look at our smashing defense is now eight instead of six. These things have not changed, but our fire resistance and energy resistance is now in the low teens instead of, what was it, eight or nine. So we got some pretty good resistance, smashing resistance up to 46, which is nice. All right. So we finished that story arc, our next contact. It looks like it's going to be Maria. Jo yeah, we can't do uh, Crimson yet. So let's head to Maria Jenkins. Crimson comes in at level 48. So we can actually do him as soon as we finish Maria Jenkins. So let's go ahead and do Maria Jenkins and we'll do Crimson. And I don't know if his story arcs might take us out. It depends how much XP we get from Maria. If I take us out, I mean take us all the way to 50. Uh, where's Maria? Here we go. Oh, we went the wrong way. We want to go to Peregrine Island. So cool, you guys got to see... Uh, you're going to see two things, I think, tonight, right? Leveling, I think. Uh, yeah, we should level up in this next mission. And a new set, a new ATO. And that is it for the Archetype Origin sets. The next sets we need are going to be regular sets. So let's take a look. We now have one, two, three sets. So I'd like to get sets on Energy Punch, Whirling Hands, Power Crash, and Energy Transfer. Um, I'm not sure... Hmm. So I'm not sure how this one's going to work. Because most attack sets have endurance modifiers, and they're usually split. There's usually not adjusted endurance, so it's usually endurance and something else. But if there is any that's just endurance, I don't think we'll be able to slot it in there. Don't know. I've, I don't know that I've ever tried that. Because I don't think I've ever had a power that didn't cause endurance to run like that was an attack. You know? It always uses at least a little. Okay, so we've got to battle, go to Praetoria and battle Infernal. Ooh. Yeah. All right, we're going to level up in this mission, I think, so we don't need to set it to plus one. Uh, I was going to learn drop it to plus one because Infernal is going to be insane at plus three if he ends up plus three to me. Uh, it's going to be a level 49 mission, but if we're level 48 and we've leveled up, we should be, well, we might be okay. Uh, let me uh, go to Tina and get the right inspirations, though. Because we're going to need more Lux. It's, I, it's always a crapshoot with this. I never know. You know, I'll be honest, I never really know what to get. Because there is a, a logic that... Um, by taking away some accuracy and damage, I'm having to stand in there longer and and take more of his blows because I'm doing the damage to him more slowly. And it might be worth just 
you know, maybe having one column of these and filling the whole thing up with damages and accuracies so that you're at max accuracy, max damage buff, and just basically dr drink a column of yellows and reds. Pound him and then drink another column of yellows and reds, and if you beat him fast enough, your defenses won't run out. But... Yeah, I just never know with that. I feel like with a lot of these arch villains, you no matter how many inspirations you down, you can't do enough damage to them to take them out in a minute. Most of them take two to three minutes. This thing only lasts two. These guys only last one. So if you don't have enough of them, you're just going to go down. Now we do have a little bit more fire resistance this time, which is nice. So these guys are plus two. They will be plus one after we defeat them. So let's take a look. These guys are, this is a lieutenant, and he gave me 6,900 XP. This is a minion. Look like a little bit of lag there. Yeah. Uh, this is a minion, and he gave me 3,500. So it's about 10,000 XP per spawn. And we need... 165,000 XP, so 16 spawns worth of enemies. I don't know how big this mission is going to be. I don't know if we're going to level up. I mean, it would the ideal thing would be to level up right before we walk in the room to fight Infernal, and then we have an extra set of all these buffs that's just, uh, just for starting to fight him. But I don't know if I can time it like that. That's going to require some finessing. Alright, so let's try and cheese it a little bit. Oh man. The quick hit option expired just as I got here. That one where it, like, it hits him fast and doesn't take a long animation time. So I'm leaving some of those guys back there because... If we need to, uh, we can use them to level up. We can come back. If we don't need to, then skipping them was a good idea because we want to try to get to Infernal right as we level up. So I just don't know how many of these guys we're going to have to face. You can see that like about six powers takes out an entire spawn. So I'm keeping an eye on this. Down to 123k. Because I don't know how many of these guys there are going to be. And to be honest, it might actually be almost be worth um, coming up on Infernal a little before we level, if we can. Oh, this guy... And I'm going to have to use some inspirations here, just because they're pounding me. Strength of will. Can't hit. Try to take at least one of them out. Yep. I'm going to have to use all my inspirations and, come back and go back to the hospital or something to get more. I mean, there's no point to holding the inspirations and then face planning. So we may have to go out, which is fine. But what I was trying to say was it might be better to actually start the fight with Infernal um, without leveling because you have to fight the portal and the beasts that come out of the portal. And if you can like level after taking out one or two of those beasts, it heals you up and it super buffs you. Then you can use the level up buff for a minute or so while you're fighting. So I don't know if we're going to be able to orchestrate that. So I'm sure there are bad guys over here, but let's just see what else is down here. Oh, 
hopefully we will get some more of the inspirations we need. Weird that these guys are only yellow. Oh, I don't know why, but um, we remember we were talking about the XCOM to hit probabilities and how it always seems in XCOM like you miss when you have a high percent chance to hit and the enemies hit when they have a low percent chance to hit. Actually, I don't remember what I was searching for, but I came across a post on Reddit by somebody who was actually complaining about that. And he was like, the very first battle, it's a tutorial battle, I think. And he, you know, he set his guys up, he put them in cover and everything. He did exactly what the tutorial said. And he had these really high percent chance to hit. He missed every single one. And the enemies had these really low percent chance to hit. They hit every single one. They killed his whole his whole group. And he said he reloaded. He tried it again. Same thing happened. And, you know, people were like, well, it's just luck. But it sure seems to happen a lot. In XCOM. I mean, I like the game. Don't get me wrong. I played through the campaign twice. But... It, it often seemed like the game was cheating. Or not reporting the probabilities correctly or something. Again yellow, why? Why are these guys only plus one? It's a level 49 mission, right? It's not one of these capped ones, she goes to level 50, Maria Jenkins. How are we doing on XP? Down to 57,000, so five more spawns. There's one. It'll be a little more than that if they stay yellow, though. Because they're not worth as many XP at yellow as they are in, when they're uh, orange. Deflected, miss, deflected, miss. Jeez. Okay, so let's see. Is this the only exit or are there others? Looks like the only one. They might be on one on the other side, too. I remember encountering a bug, or I was supposed to save a certain number of hostages, um, but I don't think that that's not true here, but I was supposed to save a certain number of hostages, and they were in little, like, green eldritch energy like that in an, in an Orn Bega lair, and I ran up to them, and, you know, the green faded, and the... Uh, uh, and the um, NPC vanished and didn't get credit for saving them and I couldn't complete the mission. And I remember going in multiple times, right, re you know, restarting the mission, trying to do it again, and I was not able to complete it and I had to auto-complete it. I think that was with Quintessence last. I'm not sure if I showed the video of that, though. I don't remember if I recorded that, if I had recorded that or if that was one of the times I wasn't recording. Try accuracy. Yeah, 
Yeah, I always come into these little intersections too fast, and there are two spawns, and I aggro them both. I didn't this time, but I usually do. How are we doing on XP? We need 7,000 XP, so we will level up on the next spawn. This might be it, guys. This might be perfect, except... Yeah, it would be perfect if it weren't for the fact that I've got to go out. Oh, man, I aggro them too. I need to get more inspirations. So, we're going to retreat here. I will pause it, and I'll bring you back when we have our tray filled. All right, folks, we are back. As I said, we are only 7,000 XP from leveling, so when we fight this spawn, we should level up. I think I'm going to wait to trigger Strength of Will until after we finish the spawn. Hopefully we'll do okay. Shouldn't be a problem. One down. Two down. And here we go. Level up. Strength of Will. Hasten. Okay, now we're going to take on the portal. And two guys come out right away, too. So this is really going to help us that we have this... Um, the buff from leveling up. We can take the portal out while the buff from leveling up is on. We should be alright. Notice how they can't really do anything to us while that buff is on, so they're about to fade. Throw some more defense on. More attack, more damage. Almost got it. The AoE's definitely helped. Alright, we've taken it out. Now it's just us against Infernal. This other guy will drop when we hit him with AoE's. So we don't have to worry about him. It's just us against Infernal. Almost got him. Let's go ahead and throw another Luck on. Some more damage. More accuracy. That level up worked really well. Pulled him down to just plus one to us. And all the leveling up buffs left it so that we even had some inspirations left over. Not bad, guys. 36,000 XP from that. And we have leveled up. So now we're going to go visit the leveler here. And then we'll talk to Maria Jenkins. Now I have to figure out what to do with these slots. Hmm. So this is this is the moment of truth. We have six slots left that we can add, level 48 and level 50. And we can't put slots in everything that could potentially be six slotted. So I've got to figure out what are we going to six slot. So let's take a look here and think about this. Um... If we want to six slot, if, if we want to use defensive sets, then we're going to need to slot probably heightened senses, rise to the challenge, takes heals. We could put a heal set on it. All it's doing is regen, though. We could do that. Mind over body is giving us resistance. We could put a resistance set on mind over body, a st like a classical standard resistance set. Heightened senses is go doing straight up defense, so we could put a straight up defense set on there. 
right? Defense sets, resistance sets. This takes threat duration to hit debuff and healing. What's the to hit debuff like? It's minus 3.5%. It's not enough, right? Even we doubled it. It's just not, a, that's not enough for me to put a whole set in there and lose the heal. Um, we're not going to bother with these. Dominable will takes defense sets. What's that do? It just does psionic. I'm not, again, for 7%, I don't think so. We don't, and like, I would love to six slot everything, but we can't. If we do that, though, we can't six slot this or this. Um, or add slots to this. I'm, I'm thinking mind over body, heightened senses, rise to the challenge are going to get the, the six slots. What's our biggest bang? This is 26% resistance. Okay, so the biggest bang for the buck is this one. Whoops. Okay, we're not leveling here. All right, so I'm, I figured out what I want to do. Train up to a new level. And so we definitely do mind over body. And... Let's do Rise to the Challenge and put, we'll eventually put a heal set on it. So we can put a resistance set in Mind Over Body. I don't know which one we're going to use. And uh, I think we're all set. Uh, we don't really need, until we get sets, we don't need to do anything with these slots. Right? Because IOs in there aren't going to do us any good. Um, I mean, I guess theoretically I could put an Endurance in each one to reduce the Endurance cost. But we got to think about what sets we want to use. So let's go to the base because we have some defense and resistance sets already pre-built and we got a bunch in our recipe. So let's go to the base and let's take a look at what we have and see if there's... I really wish you could do the auction house from in the base because then I got to go back and forth. But let's see what we've got. So in terms of sets, we have Kismet and Kismet is... A level 30 which is not high we have red fortune which is a defense set and then we have titanium coating which is a resistance set so do we have we're full up on recipes too so we need to start doing some of these guys um, yeah we don't really have any of these guys impervium so this is an orange set that's going to be more expensive this gives us recovery psionic defense um, that's good for us cold and f fire resistance is nice sonic and toxic resistance is nice that's a nice set my guess is that's going to be super expensive to acquire so impervium uh, we have the we have the materials to make this it's only level 37 though uh hmm so thunder strike that's not bad do we have some of this or we have multi strike so thunder strike is that aoe no that's range damage we don't want that one. so multi strike is the other one i was looking at there's red fortune for defense but this one's only level 34. Like, I feel like if I'm going to get it, I'd rather get the higher. But we could have one that's a little lower. Wouldn't be that bad. Let's look at what Red Fortune does. Red Fortune gives us Smashing and Lethal Resistance, uh, which is already nice. We've already got it up nice. And more Fire and Cold. Damage Recharge and then Range Defense and Energy Negative Defense. We That's nice. So we could do Red Fortune as for defense sets. And maybe Titanium Coating for resistance. Something like that. I got to see what the Titanium Coating... Let's go outside, see what they cost, and um, see what they do. Because I don't. it doesn't say on the created enhancement what it'll do. 
So let's go outside. I don't know why I went to Atlas. It doesn't really matter. Let's take a look. So auction house. Recipes. Was it uh, resistance? Titanium coating. So let's just take a look at this. Um, so this gives us negative energy resistance, maximum health, smashing and lethal by three is nice. So I like this one. How much do these things cost? That is not bad. Which chest? See, I'm stupid. Which two do we have? Let's take a look. And actually, let me think about this here. Um, the only one we can actually do right now, all six, is titanium coating. So let's pull these out. We have two, right? One, two. So I have endurance. Oh, I have the same one. Aha, uh -huh. I only have one. So I have endurance at level 43. Well, that makes it a little easier, like in terms of what, uh, you know, having the low level thing. No, we don't because we can't use them both. So they both are the endurance buffer. It's probably the cheapest one too. Okay, so let's take a look at how much of this we can do. We have to get rid of some of these recipes also, right? So can we sell any of them? So let's take a look. I don't think it's oh, this one. What is this? This is Melee Dent. We're not going to sell that. My um, guess is that's probably not worth selling. Uh, obliteration is what? Melee AoE, okay, well, we'll keep those. Pacing of the turtle. Uh, nobody buys those, so we'll get that. Power transfer. Probably nobody buys these. No. Nobody bidding. Uh, unbreakable guard. Okay, well, we definitely don't want to get rid of that, because it's useful. Maybe this one? No, see, all the good ones are the ones we want to keep, right? Performance shifter, yeah, then nobody's going to be probably buying that. Kinetic combat range does melee damage. Don't we have a range damage somewhere? Knockback, probably not. Nope. Nope, nobody's interested in any of these. All right, so we can sell this stuff. All right, so we're full up on recipes. Let's go sell some recipes. So, uh, recipes. We do not need... What is this one? Red Fortune we're going to keep. This is heal we're going to keep. Melee damage, obliteration, melee AOE damage we're going to keep. Titanium coating. Recipe. This one is resistance. So we have one. Okay, so we'll keep that. Uh, we definitely don't need that or that. We don't need those five. They're all level 40s. We don't need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. We definitely don't need those. Or that, or those, or that, or that, or that, or that. Okay, so a lot of these we don't need because it's stuff we don't use. It's funny how many, how much, how many, like, 
seemingly cool enhancements you get that nobody wants, and then the ones everybody wants, nobody gets, right? Okay, so now back to the auction house. And if we look at our recipes, so hang on. We had another Red Fortune, right? Or not Red Fortune, um, what was it? Titanium Coating. So we actually have the Resistance. It's only level 37, but we have that one. And we have the Endurance. So, we have Resistance, and we have Endurance. How much are these? So this one is 150,000. Let's try 180. See if we can grab it. And then this one is going for 150,000. Let's try the 180 didn't work. Let's try 200,000. Apparently not. Try this one. Apparently not. Well, I am not probably going over about 300,000 on these because it's just not worth it. Okay, so 300 seems to work. So let's cancel these three. Now I gotta be careful. So we have accuracy damage, wait, no, we have recharge, resistance, and resistance, and endurance. So endurance, recharge, let's try 300. This one, maybe 350. Wow. And this one? Nope. Okay, well, in my view, it is not worth that much more. I'm, I'm not going to spend like a million each, at least not right now. Uh, we'll go back to the base. We will make the recipes we can. And then we'll just store them in storage until I can get some more from, you know, just adventuring or maybe the prices come down and people put them up for a sane price. I'm, I'm not paying like a million for each one of those. They're not that great. Right? These, these are not great sets. They're, they're just sets, right? They give you a tiny little bit of inspiration. They don't do anything awesome, right? There's no procs or anything to them, so they don't do PvP. All right, so this is pet damage. We don't need that. This is sniper attacks. We don't need that. I should have sold those. What do we have? So, so thunder strike is range damage. We don't want that. Titanium coating. So we'll create that. And then this one is we need blood of the incarnate and alchem alchemical silver. Blood of the incarnate over here. I never remember which things are which. There's blood of the incarnate. It's the only one we got. And there should be alchemical silver around here somewhere with all the whites I have. Are you kidding me? With all the white salvage I have, I don't have alchemical silver? Wow. There it is. Okay, so we'll go ahead and craft that. So we now have three of the titanium coatings we need. Looks like four, but uh, we're out, it's these two repeat. Anything else we need to craft? Yeah, we don't need that, we don't need that. Thunderstrike, okay, that's range damage. Um, breakable guard, my guess is that's probably gonna be really expensive to make. Spill ink iron, we don't really have that right now. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, I can sell a bunch of these still. Um, I will do that off screen. All right, so guys, we are level 48. We're set up to buy, a, to get a set in here, and we have like four of the six, uh, three of the six that we need. So we need three more, but um, I'm going to wait till the prices come down or until I find them. And uh, yeah, I think we're all set. Until next time, guys, I am Scrapperlock, and this has been City of Heroes.